great ideas, right? Especially when you're drinking beer, like in your brewery two class. You're like, you know, we could do this. We can, we can have a, a business around such and such and such, right? And all the other great ideas came from other places. You were inspired. You had your uh, entrepreneurial moment, your entrepreneurial seizure. Say, I got to do something. I got you into this class. Congratulations. You're here. You went through it. And now you're going to go do something with this new skill. What are you going to do with it? Try to implement it. There you go. Try, right? Who's that? The, uh, the Yoda quote, man. There is no there try. Is no do or do not, right? There is no try. Right? So we keep you as motivated as you came into this class, even more motivated, motivated to go out of this class and to be awesome. Steve, what do you got to be? Awesome. awesome. Steve, I like the way that you play along. So um, this is how it's going to work tonight. You are going to uh, come up here and you're going to log into your Gmail account because you sent me stuff. So I assume you can get into your account and you set it. You're going to pull up your own stuff here. Yeah, or something close to that. Right, because uh, you said it to me in a format that uh, I'm supposed to use. So let's see if you can use it um, instead of me digging through all your stuff and making sure stuff works. So, uh, is there any questions before we get started? None. Everybody got pizza, right? Everybody got soda. Everybody got pizza and soda. Who wants to go first? I love this guy. <laughs> Steve, come on up, pal. First guy, lady here tonight. Can you log into uh, your stuff there? I do not have it on Gmail. Okay. What do you have for my work account too? All right, so how can I'll do it on my Gmail account. Can we get yours? Sure. Yeah. There you go. All the easier. Let me get my mess out of your way. See? See? This, it. You look this awesome on. This makes you look giant. Mm. Like a movie star or something. Mm -hmm. Get points for being able to get into your own email account. Dun, 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 dun. Yes, sir. I have like clicking that I need to do. Do you have like a clicker by chance, or can I just walk through it? Yeah, uh, you click a lot to you. Okay. Um, you know you look blind. There's a clicker here. I'm going to assume that this works. It's got a little red button lines up on it. Give it a shot. Okay. <clears throat> okay. Now we get ten minutes. No, I'm going to start the timer for you. Mm -hmm. Page yourself. Let you go. I'll give you the two minute warning. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So we're, no? doing this, we're doing this together, just so you know. So we're alternating slides and all that. So. Gotcha. All right, guys. The show is all yours. Hello, everyone. everyone. I'm Cody Morris. I'm Steve Shane. Our uh, business is Doghouse Brewing and Cellars. Uh, we are a uh, so, at Doghouse Brewing Cellars, we provide a diverse brewing experience under one roof for people to enjoy beer and wine. All over San Diego through its taste room and through its flagship brewery in the mountains of Alpine. Um, there's pretty much four people that make up our team. Right now, it's, uh, Steve is our director of operations. He brings a vast amount of knowledge to the team. Running businesses, starting family businesses, and currently has just started a business with my sister. Um, they have a Campbell business. Uh, he has 17 plus years of experience management in the military. And um, he's going to make this his priority after he retires. So, this is our thing. Uh, I will be the head brewer and the vintner. He's a winemaker. Uh, I have been home brewing for about three years and making wine for about two years. And 
I recently was hired at Twisted Manzanita, so I'm going to be getting some experience working at a production brewery while we build out Dog House and make it into uh, our own. So, um, another, another member of the team will be our general manager. It's actually my sister and Steve's girlfriend. Love that girl. <laughs> <laughs> uh, she brings 10 years experience, so she's a really big uh, asset to us. She brings 10 years experience in the restaurant industry. She's been a general manager and has done everything from ordering to Scheduling, so she's kind of the day to day operations, knowing what's going on, and being the backbone behind us when we want to do crazy stuff. She kind of reels it in, keeps track of us. And then the fourth member is actually my wife, and she will be our sales and marketing department uh, to start. She has recently, recently helped launch an app called Zingy, which is kind of like Uber for dog walking in San Diego. Um, we're based out of LA, and she's here as city manager in San Diego. Um, and she brings a uh, background in school and communications and marketing. So. All right, the business model. Keep it simple. It's wine and craft beer. Who can't bring their girl, their favorite girl, to go get some wine or craft beer? So that's that's our vision, that's our mission. So how it's gonna work is a business always has to grow. So the first year, we're going to start the production company or the production facility um, with a small tasting room. And then we're going to expand to Alpine, larger tasting room. And then we're going to work down the eight to downtown, another tasting room, and then move south where there's not a lot of breweries. And uh, then also go north a little ways to maximize that six tasting rooms that we can have. So that's our growth plan. So with the craft beer and wine under one roof, there's only one other brewery that has that. So it, it limits our competition. So that's our value is we want to expand on that. There's an up and coming urban wine market or wine tasting room. Uh, our target markets, obviously enthusiasts of craft beer and wine. Dog owners, we'll get into that a little bit later. And then I, I also soon to be retired after 20 years and very passionate about military and first responders and giving them fun occasions, discounts, reasons to hang out at our taste rooms. Marketing plan, social media, obviously. Charity events, I think it's our biggest thing, especially with, if, if has everybody been to, uh, um, help me out, uh, the dog, where dogs are. Dog beach. Shelter. Shelter. Dog Animal shelter. shelter. <laughs> Everybody <laughs> been there. Not like dog beach. It's so yeah. hard to find them. Um, I mean, it's a sad thing. Like, all the stuff I've seen in my career, I go to an animal shelter and, and I'm sad leaving and I want to take everything in there. And I know his wife is, it's times 10. So that's a big thing for us is marketing how to. Uh, help the animals in San Diego at shelters. <clears throat> Activities like we just talked about, local pet charities. Um, we're going to do a portion of sales that goes to uh, helping pets from the shelters. And obviously we're going to hit up craft beer and wine events and then my favorite, adventure sports. All right, financial analysis. So the key thing on this slide of awesome numbers that I made up myself that looks like I'm gonna, we're going to make a bunch of money um, is the initial startup of the business. We have finance, we have money down. We're going to use a we're going to use a VA uh, small business loan. So we're good at the initial startup for a production facility and first tasting room. After that, the next big choke point that I see is the third year where we want to start distributing. So every year we're going to expand on the tasting rooms, but to do trucking, bottling, canning, everything else, we're good. that's where we're going to need investment from outside investors. <clears throat> yeah, so that's we're good on that. <laughs> Kind of have been analyzing the market on, on what we can bring to the market, and 
Currently, the San Diego beer market has been growing. Everybody knows that. There's over 105 breweries now in San Diego. Um, but the growth isn't there really in the wineries. I mean, it started to pick up, and, and so that's kind of where we, we see this, this going, is being able to kill two birds with one stone. Everybody loves beer, and a lot of people love wine in San Diego. And people drive to Temecula all the time, so by bringing the people together under one roof, that's kind of what we've seen that trend, something that we can really pounce on and be a major player in that game. Um, craft beer has moved up to 11% um, in the nation, and it's only going to continue to grow. They want about 20% 20, 20 by 2020, and we think that we can really contribute to that. And uh, for competitor analysis and advantage, we believe that we're capable of producing product that can rival the big names of the brewing industry. We are dedicated to the craft. We are meticulous in the production of our product, and there's no doubt that many breweries here produce top notch products, but we feel confident in saying that we can rival them and be with the big guns here. All right, the roadmap. So the first portion is basically next year. So we have the financing for that. The follow on years to 2022 is where we're going to need follow on financing because I think the growth we won't, we won't have enough money for the growth or how fast it's growing. Um, so yeah, the big thing is, as you can see up there, we're going to start in, well, the next big step is can and bottling, and then uh, slowly growing out throughout San Diego County, the tasting rooms. Bring it all home. So our at Doghouse Brewing and Cellar, we can compete in both craft beer and wine market. Our research shows that both have been and will continue to grow. So by attacking both markets head on, Doghouse Brewing and Cellar is going to become a major name in the industry. Our business model will appeal to consumers that are looking to try something a little out of the ordinary when it comes to their stuff, their beers. But we also don't want to stray too far, too far off course, and produce the styles that are appealing to the mass market. Our wine angle will give us an advantage as well because we. Now, groups of people that will either visit a winery or a brewery can come to one place under one roof. There you go. All right. <laughs> Thank you. Please join your partner in the center here. Any questions for our, uh, our presenters? Come up with one question. Go. Uh, you spoke on uh, how, in the very beginning, of dogs would it be brought up later in the uh, presentation. Can you expand on that slightly? Well, we we said like we do want to partner up with some charities and stuff. We between him and I, or between Terry and Steve and my wife and I, we have about nine dogs, and we're very passionate about dogs. And so it's something that we really wanted to take care of. I mean, you see it in the name Doghouse Brewing. Like, we want to be a dog-friendly place. We want to help out with the, with the dog community, have a place that people can bring a dog to the brewery with them. Yeah, it's probably on me. I think I missed a point in the fact that we're going to make a dog-friendly tasting room. And then also the flagship brewery is going to be obviously acreage um, where dogs can just run around. You can relax. Uh, what's that one place where you can drop your kids off like a dog? <laughs> the kennels. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no. so, yeah, we want to be a very dog-friendly dog place. I mean, just because we are passionate about dogs. We love dogs. And, so. Any other questions? Uh, you just partially answered it, but I was going to ask why Alpine and what your plans for the space were there. But obviously, just aside from the acreage for the dog. Because I don't like people and I don't want <laughs> <the> space. <laughs> There's not a lot of movies out there. Yeah. We, want to, we want to be somewhere. Where people can go out and it's kind of like a day trip. Get away for a little while, go be out in the mountains, go sit down, have a beer, not be, you know, have to hear horns going by, just kind of relaxing environment, sit down in the taste room, outdoor in the taste room up there. All right. Gentlemen, thank you. Thank you. Was, who's up next? Let's go. Cool. Steps on Dude, I, that's what, I hit. That was my first two little slices, man. That was killing me. Okay. 
Dun, 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 dun. Presentation number two. All right. So now that you saw somebody present, is there anything that, after seeing somebody present, that you're going to do different when you present now? Yeah, what are you going to do? Mm -hmm. like I'm selling my late night something. <laughs> yeah. I don't think I would make over here with something. No, it, 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 this, guys, this is one of the reasons we go through all this, right? You get to go through yourself, you get to watch everybody else go through this exercise. Um, a couple of the things that, that I'll observe, right, that, that I, I point out, I think uh, uh, with a script makes it so much easier. You don't have to remember where you are, you don't miss anything, right? All you do is have to knock out what you already thought was important. Stick to the script. That's why they have something called a script. That's how come, you know, in the movie there's a script, right? And, that, and everything else that they tell you, hey, write a script, because scripts are really great tools uh, for presentation. And then the other is, is, is in the energy, right? Uh, I think you, uh, you have varying degrees of energy, perhaps focus, right? Um, and Sauber uh, uh, said, you know, you, you've got to uh, bring that energy and that passion. You're trying to create a vision for that prospect. I mean, at the end of this thing, they get to be like, man, this is awesome. I totally have to give you money, which you didn't ask for money, but we didn't necessarily have you set up. But remember, you're supposed to ask for something at the end of the presentation, yeah. right? So um, great, you got me all the way here. Now, why am I here? What do you want, right? And there's got to be a something that you want. You want a charity to, to join you on your cause. Um, you want somebody else to go in, the, in, this, in this property development that you want. Uh, you want somebody to be, to be your first uh, corporate sponsor of beer camp, whatever it is, you got to ask. If you don't ask, you won't get right. You're not, and you're not doing these presentations, you know, just for fun. I mean, like you are tonight. Uh, I mean, there's a purpose to all this stuff. So make sure that if you're going to invest the time, you're coming up with a business plan and set up meetings and presentations that it is purposeful, and that you come out of it saying, getting the ROI out of why did we just go through all that time and all that stress and all that development. It's because we needed to get something from business. Now when you go out, go out and kill it and then bring it home, right? And then get on to that next step. So any other uh, observations for the first presentation? Anything else you'd do different? Me, I would have put, uh, use more slides just to chop your stuff up into more slides rather than a whole lot of text on one slide. Okay. Yeah, I could see how that, you know, as you were clicking through, first of all, you, you control the information. If you give them seven things in a list, what do we all do? Read, the, read the list, right? So now I'm like on thing five and six when you're trying to tell me one, I'm not even paying attention to you. So if you parcel that out, right, give me the number one and then tell me about it, right, you got me. I've got nothing else to focus on. I got to listen to you, right? Very good. Observations. Let's see what we can learn from number two. Gentlemen, floor is yours. We're all set. Well, we represent Pistol Pack and Metery. Uh, thank you very much for joining us tonight and letting us uh, bend your ear for a short period. Uh, we're here to put you under the table with our business plan. My name is Theron Eric Schwanhauer Cologne. It's what happens when a Puerto Rican and a German marry. <laughs> we, we've been contemplating switching over from a home brewing friends to a competitive commercial brewery for about three years now. Uh, we've gone through and put together an excellent team, and now we're ready to start. So my last name is just as bad as his, so you can just call us Kevin and Theron. I am not a businessman, but I've been an engineer for many years, and it drove me to drink. So it also drove me to make connections at the local bar and music scene, and we both wanted to contribute to something to the community by way of the business of alcohol. My husband is part of our team. Uh, he's an excellent communication manager and planner. And artwork will be crucial to our business, and so we have partnered with a local San Diego artist who is very distinctive and has web commerce experience. Oops, sorry. We plan to contract out some of the services where legality is crucial, such as the uh, accounting and the legal services. Both of these firms have had a strong local presence in San Diego for many years. We have a line of beverages, which all come from ancient recipes using ancient techniques so ancient that they've basically been forgotten. And the time is right for them to come back. It is just amazing the depth and the breadth of all the ancient recipes for alcohol that mankind has created over thousands of years. But our recipes, and especially our techniques, are also infused with our modern, innovative touches. As we were brewing these recipes and using these techniques at home, 
all of our friends told us that they appeal to the modern trends and modern market. So we decided to start a brewery, but it's going to be difficult to compete with the big regional majors who are making millions of gallons of beverage per year. So our plan is to offer our customers very specialized and personalized services, starting with artwork that they can commission for their own bar or their venue or their event. We plan to brew small batches at first, only one barrel at a time. But we will have several recipes going at the same time. Some will be savory, others sweet. Customers can buy into each barrel and sponsor the quantity that they can desire or can afford. Our target markets are pretty much cut out for us very easily based on our recipes. The rarity and the unusual nature of our recipes appeals to a lot of modern trends like the foodies and the locavores. The historical nature of our beverages appeals to certain themed events like the Renaissance fairs. We hope to steal market share from the crappy mead that you buy at a Renaissance fair and move on from there to things like Shakespeare plays and weddings. So because we're a small operation and quality and the local uh, taste is our trademark, mainly our marketing will be face to face. However, we do plan to go through some traditional channels such as uh, ads in print and on the web. Our main input needs to be the highest quality honey and adjunct ingredients. We also need to secure just the right kind of facility to brew our beverages. We plan to do a lot of the delivery and setup ourselves since we're starting out at a very small volume. Besides brewing the beverages, we plan to act as ambassadors to educate the public about mead. One good way to do that is through local farmers markets. Once our product is in a few bars and venues, we hope that young people will take a liking to our artwork and buy it as posters and t-shirts. So of course we have meticulously worked out all the financial numbers on all this. So just take our word for it that uh, <laughs> we have a large product line and so we can adjust our offerings and be very responsive to market preferences. Naturally we have to consider all the expenses, but not only the ingredients, but the fees for participation in farmer markets and fairs and the custom artwork itself. This is going to be a very promising venture considering that the United States alcoholic beverage market is around $250 billion per year and California itself just right here accounts for something around one-eighth of that. As most of us know who are involved in the alcohol industry, craft and high quality products are stealing market share today from the big majors. Our flagship products are meads, which is simply fermented honey wine with spices and fruits for flavoring. Mead is a specialty product right now, but it is beginning to make a comeback, and people are noticing in the media. And the millennial customers, the younger people, aged 21 to 40, are looking for something they haven't tried before in particular. Mead has appealed to drinkers for many thousands of years, but it's been all but forgotten lately. By starting our meadery, we are really going in on the ground floor of mead in the United States. Honey flavors and honey flavored whiskeys and vodkas are big right now. So are fruit flavorings and the alcoholic beverages, especially the sour and tart flavorings. Men and women tend to have different preferences in this, and we feel the female market is highly underserved. Polling data also says these tastes are regional, so a small local operation can get in touch with the market better than a big regional brewery. Mead right now is just an emerging market, but there is a little bit of competition still. Golden Coast Meadery up in Encinitas, just a little north of here, makes meads that we think are drinkable, but people tend to prefer our recipes because our technique ages them and mellows them longer. On the other hand, two companies from the Mideast are importing mead into California right now. Moonlight Meadery's products are a bit pricey and they're very dry, like dry champagne, drier than our recipes. And on the other hand, there's a company called Bee Nectar Meadery, which is importing a lot of mead with different pop culture references. We feel there's plenty of market share up for grabs in the mead industry, and we, are battle we aren't currently battling head-to-head -head with meaderies just yet. We can all cooperate to give the public more thirst for mead. On the other hand, when we do compete, our recipes will kick the other guy's asses. Also, San Diego is a hot market. And small local operations like ours can serve the needs of customers and bars and venues much better than one at a distance. 
So we've been talking about the superiority of our recipes and our techniques and our innovative, uh, innovative process. And we have several products that take advantage of the flavor trends and the fruit that we just saw in the polls just now. We've been working on these recipes for years, but we thought we'd give you guys a little bit of an insight into the research and development, the R&D part of our, our operation. Since we are going for the foodies and the high-end taste experts, Kevin thought a savory mead with a goat cheese and artichoke might do the trick. It didn't. But the casserole was really good. <laughs> well, on the other hand, uh, Theron makes a pretty mean Cajun stew, but in this particular case, it turned out to be just a little too mean. Ah, I still say if we just turn the ghost peppers down, it'll be fine. <laughs> so we were really hoping to get in the door of some sporting events like baseball games, Padres games with a sauerkraut bratwurst recipe, but that one just didn't do well on the taste test. You'll never understand how annoying it is to spend six months on something and have it turn out just so awful. So in terms of time, our business plan has two tracks. We have to obtain federal, state, and local licensing, and that depends first thing on finding a facility. While the licensing is going along, we can secure equipment and ingredients and make contacts with bars and venues. But we can't sell anything legally until the license comes through. So the main reason that we're raising capital is to secure a long-term contract for a facility. Just like any successful military campaign, We've had to analyze our and plan our strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. We really feel that the unusual and diverse recipes and our techniques that we have are our strength. We're also well connected to the local community, which is an opportunity for contracts and endorsements. Our weaknesses are the same as many starting alcoholic ventures. It's capital investments, and we depend on permits and zoning from the government. Red tape. Also, we have to worry about the fact that the bees are under threat. But the fact that we own an organic farm with beehives allows us to respond to this accordingly. So what is really, so who is ready to climb onto this drunken adventure with us? For the different levels of funding support, we offer different benefits. As a tier one supporter, we would be willing to teach you some of our knowledge about brewing. In fact, as a tier two supporter, we will help you create and age a unique recipe all your own in an oak barrel for up to five years on our premises. We are willing to sell a certain amount of equity in our company, but as the founders, we want to retain the majority share. On the other hand, if you guys, if one of you guys represents a bar or a venue, you can sign up for free mead deliveries for life under tier four by stepping up to the plate right now. This also includes some artwork projects, some of our customized artwork. Or if you're really serious about your ancient beverages, why not sign up with a partner? So who's with us? <laughs> yeah, I think you guys are great, man. Very nice, very nice. Let's uh, let's go up in the questions. Who's got questions? Joe. Uh, the only thing I would say is you, you mentioned that your recipes are awesome, but you mentioned four specific recipes all of which didn't work. But you mentioned four specific recipes that people loved. We and if you're making a pitch, it seems like it should be the other way around. That's true. Specific Good observation. For, an in, in, for in making people want to have inquiries, you know, if you tell people all these really crappy recipes and they're paying attention, there were some good recipes that came through on we, a different slide. We flashed right through this, but we can elaborate some more on that if we But yeah, if, if you feel that really we need to kind of speak on that, then that's something we could add into it. I would just eliminate the, the bad recipes altogether. I think, that, I think the bad ones were funny, but I would do the funny ones first, but then talk about the ones that worked. Something. That's a good idea. Right. I was thinking about an on again, off again, like bad recipe, good recipe, bad recipe, good recipe. Bad you may, recipe it may be recipe. tough to remember which ones it was. It a yeah, that, that was a problem I had. Is you get a little convoluted then. I also wouldn't mention that you spent six months on a bad recipe because that's a lot of time and effort. Uh, I don't know, man. I think I, I think you might. It, it may speak to your your commitment, sure. right, and to, to your passion. I mean, I I've uh, spent more than six months on something that I thought was really awesome that didn't pan out. But you know, all very valid, good points. Anybody else? Yeah, I would agree with that too. Like, I would like to hear like some of your like, flagship product. You just kind of breeze right over that. And that's if you don't so. Know can I me. can I ask you a question on that? Just because th this was what I was supposing, and I want to see if this actually occurred or not. Did you find yourself asking that question so much that by the end of the presentation you were going, "Okay, hey, you, what the hell do you make that's good?" Or do you find like by the end of it you were like, "I don't give a shit. You only told me crappy things." No, I wouldn't say I, I didn't make 
information. I was just I was just kind of curious. Yeah, that I, I guess I probably would ask some follow up questions about it, but. I'm just kind of curious. What is your thoughts on that? I, I think that uh, I think you have a missed opportunity uh, in in not showcasing those, those ones that did. Like I said, I appreciate the humor in it, but remember, you're trying to sell them what okay. is good, what is happening, what is positive. Okay. Yeah. Good. yeah Anything else? Other. We didn't actually call them up by name. Man. Yeah. yeah. Or describe kind of some of the. Strangest that exists within them. Any other okay. comments? How'd you guys like it? Yeah. James? Uh, I mean, I'm not sure they're critical or anything. Oh, please be absolutely critical. They yeah. did a good job of the energy and stuff, and I really liked it. It was like pretty entertaining. But um, when you're switching back and forth so much, it was having, it was, I was having difficulty like following. Like, like following like, the bouncing ball? Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> it's like you it, he would say like two lines, and you'd say two lines, and he'd say two lines. And it was like, it was like becoming like, who am I listening to here? You know? So yeah. if you say maybe like two slides rather than just like a couple of blurbs, then maybe you'll, you'll, you'll have me engaged with it. That's a good comment. Yeah, although the, if there were some real fun exchanges on yeah. the short with the and, comments yeah, and stuff. So I think you could just a balance because I, I was moving the camera back and forth and I and I, and I started like guessing who was going to go next. I'm like, move the camera because I'm going to be ready for you. And then sometimes I guessed wrong. But. Yeah, and there were good exchanges too. There, there were good parts, like, especially when you guys were talking about the bad ones. Um, and you were like, oh, I should have done this. Like, I thought that was kind of funny and showed like, a little bit of personality. So that was yeah, I think there was a lot of likability in the presentation. I, I, I think there was it was style, and th there was enough of performance that I think it kept uh, it kept me engaged in the information and paying attention to it all. And I thought you guys did a very nice job on it. Thank you. Here we go. Good round, guys. You hear that? We got an A. <laughs> <laughs> Who's up next? Everybody must go. Can I just say something? Huh? Can I just say something real quick? Sure. I don't have my, my, my homework done, but I don't think it's fair of me to criticize everyone else, at least putting myself out here, like <laughs> saying, I don't have my homework done. So I don't have my homework done. Um, and so if you want me to put up there and say something, I will, but I don't really have a, a presentation. I just don't think it's fair of me to sit here and and, you know, and talk about everyone else's presentation. So not go up there myself. No. So uh, so if you've got a full presentation that meets the specs and you're good to go, then you got a slot up there, man. It's you, de you decide whether you want to go. You're welcome. I don't, to I don't have a full presentation. I don't. I don't have last week's. You know. All right. Work, well, you, you're obviously you are part of the class, yeah. and you are obviously welcome to contribute to your constructive criticism and insights and help your other classmates. On their presentations. I just want to put that out there because I don't want to just sit there and make not, comments and everyone no, no, and, no, and, no, and, and then the class is over. That's awesome. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> comments on the video. Right. I'm a All videographer. Right. I can do my presentation and email it to everyone in a week. Yes, right. That's what we do. We get a custom presentation. He'll, be, he'll set up a Skype call with you and walk you through it personally. Who's up next? All right, next person to the door. No, they won. There we go. Thanks out. Wow. Number three. Stop. We set. What was the time on ours? You know, um, <laughs> I was so engaged, I did not check the time. Uh, you know, I'm cool with that answer. I liked uh, the graphics and little charts and the stuff like that. That was really cool. Thank you. It was really helpful to. It just made it, it got you to a place of cool. I get where this is so much quicker than just trying to make sense of uh, like any kind of copy or stuff that was on a slide. I want to use the graphics to reinforce the speech, but not just read the speech that the graphics are showing. I think it's more saying as it gets you in the mindset. Yeah.
Right. Yeah. So we can right. basically come back. And them in All right. Room. Number three. Here you go. We'll get you a timer and you're good to go, buddy. I know I think this so it actually enlarges everything. It doesn't have the stuff on the side. Uh, okay. Production mode in the very bottom. This is a scary here. A little too. No. Uh, okay. no. Yeah, it's a slow slide. Yeah. Go to the right, right here. Presentation. You yeah. can slide show. There you go. Cleverly labeled oh, slide show. Yeah. Um, hello, good evening, and thank you for the opportunity to preview my Ruby Startup 2 business plan. My name is Albert Fabricer, and tonight I'd like to introduce you to BrewDev LLC. So basically, in a nutshell, what we are is that we are a startup business management firm uh, with a firm of passionate consultants dedicated to the craft beer industry. Uh, I am the director of business development, and my company helps craft beer entrepreneurs implement, execute a successful business model. So in the broad scope of everything is uh, my firm provides professional consulting services and aims to become an exclusive business management firm for the craft beer industry. So I like to be the one-stop shop for all you guys who want to open up a very meadery, bottle shop, restaurant, and so forth. So, and we assist the, and we are assisting entrepreneurs in a journey to establish a related business from conception and nurture their process until it completed. And so our mission, our mission is the company's mission is to serve small business clients in the need of logistics, technical, business strategies, and services. So with everybody's questions out there, I'm confused about legal, I'm confused about where should I do this, I'm confused about marketing, we will assist you and help you out and to actually get you to understand your business model and help you implement your idea from an actual concept to an actual real process business plan. Uh, we are dedicated to helping craft beer entrepreneurs execute a sexual business model. We'll provide business management with 